Okay, V-Sync, turn that on. Okay, sound levels seem good. All right. I'm getting a new pair of headphones, by the way, because the ones I have here are just falling apart completely, so I'm just now having to... I'll follow them after. That character name. Sir Dandrick Brannett. Chapter restarts enabled. Consequences open. <coughs> I should have put that hidden, but probably would have made it more. You hold the fate of a single man in your hands. You will follow his life from birth to death. Your choices shall define Sir Brannett and will grow up to be. You decide his personality, social status, and what, what mark he'll leave on history. With every step he takes at your behest, Sir Brennan's character will change and evolve. Your decisions will close some doors for him, but may open up many others. The world of Sir Brennan's birth is a ruthless realm where people are divided into estates. It is hard to be a hero here. Be ready to accept that Sir Bennett cannot overcome every challenge on his path. Every hard choice will test his character and personal qualities. Often you will not be able to make the choice you would like to. It may happen because you chose a different road earlier. Exhausted your hero's willpower or haven't earned the right position in society. Every victory shall be a struggle. Every path paved with bitter losses and gut-wrenching failures. Accept the tragedy. This is how you will create a gripping and unique tale for your hero. What will become of Sir Brennan, or Sir Brennan and his loved ones in this world? It will depend all on you. Alright. The story of my life remains written on these pages. But my fate has always been my own. Every deed, every choice, every person I met made me what I am. Could I have taken a different path? Could I have found a different calling? Alter the very course of history? And what price would I have to pay? Pretty cool. <clears throat> Your fingers are strained with ink. Your breath grows ragged. Your hands are shaking. Yet the words begin to appear on the page before you one by one. Clinging together to form a chronicle of your own life, who are you? And how did you reach this end? You were born, raised, and lived by your entire life in the blessed Arcanian Ar Empire. In the land of a man's destiny is predetermined the moment of his birth, yet human or Arcanian, nobleman or priest, or lowborn commoner, all are bound to the divine will of the twin gods. And each life is not but a single cog in the universe's immeasurable machine. Or immeasurable machine. The memories come flooding back. They engulf you in merciless wave, binding together in days they were twice or truce dead and gone the dreams of your childhood the adolescence your youth spent in the capital years of peace dreaming with life and a war drenched in blood high ranks and lowly deeds opponent place or opiate palaces secretive city back streets fields of battle and faces so many faces of people you held dear the people who walked in this road by your side. Such is your life, all now exposed by ink erupting into the page. With your every step, you sought to change the world as you saw fit, the choices of your upbringing, the path of you carved in your youth, the fruits of your struggle, the consequences of your sacrifice, all that led you here, to the end of your time. And every choice had a price. Now, years and years later, the crossroads of your life echo into your memory. The pain and the joy 
existentially in mangled or intermangled. Could you have taken a different path, chosen a different calling, found a different place in the world? You had the power to alter the very course of history. Now, on the verge of death, you struggle. Okay, so you got choices there. Uh, you struggle with the doubt, seeking the answers to the last and the most critical question of all your life, of all the paths in life. Why did you walk this one? Did you choose your own fate, or was it your life shaped by the forces beyond your control? What determines a man's destiny? There is no destiny, a higher power, the world around him, the man himself. The man himself, the world around him. The path was charted for you by the people, the age, and the society in which you lived. I picked the man himself. You can hear the death's footsteps drawing near. You square your shoulders and take a deep, full breath. You have found your final answer. That is the destiny other than a long chain of your own actions and decisions. No matter what happened in your life, you will always had a choice. You lived the life you deserved, only you can answer for it. But are you right about this? How you doing there, Mr. Disc? You're the magnificent one, I'm just here. <laughs> Bye, you doing? Uh, is it true to learn the truth that you will have to return to the very beginning, remembering every step you took along the way? And thank you, sweetie, for that host. Every stook you took along the way. On these pages, the man, uh, the story of a man named Dandrick Bratain will live once more. But yeah, I'm not going to read this one for very... I'll uh, read this one. Ha! Huh? I'm not going to play this one for incredibly long. Again, I'm just going to start off the stream with like a quick game to cover. And then I'm going straight to pray. But... I'm going to probably go up to youth. If it doesn't take too long, if like if I see it goes into a um, too too long, then I'll stop. Because again, that's a quite a bit of reading, and like throat can only take so much. I mean, I'm I'm open minded to reading stuff like this, but at the same time, my throat gets freaking ripped to shreds after I'm done doing it because again, I have to constantly keep correcting myself, and I just. <laughs> Chapter one: Childhood. Childhood, where life begins. First words, first unsteady steps. You are but a ch small child learning about the world in which you were born. To you, everything was so new, so baffling, so unforgiving. Yep. Um, I, I kept with... I think it was Iron... I wasn't the Iron Man, it was one above that, but I'm just going to keep choosing the... Uh, stick with decisions, basically. So I think I just kept it by default and just kept going. A long, trying life stretches before you. So many feats and faults, so many fateful choices to come. Yet you are already stowing the seeds of your future self. You are learning to live and survive in this world. Looking for a place within it to call your own. Choosing your future destiny. Boy, Destiny 3's coming out in this game? How'd they know? Who will you be when you... Who will you grow up to be? In chapters childhood, adolescence, and youth, you will live through your hero's coming of age. You will shape their protagonist's personality as qualities and relationships. By the end of the prologue, you will determine the estate and the future occupation of your hero. Only in a child adulthood will he start to flourence or influence the world around him, even the ultimate fate of the Empire. Who will Dandrick Brian grow up to be? It's your call. They keep reminding me of that. Childhood where life begins, first words, the first day steps, but you do do Okay, steps in this personal life will, uh, can happen. Uh, so, fencing lesson beyond. As a child, you will suffer your first death and rebirth. Insight. A nobleman's. Um, 
You will challenge the sacred order and accept the season noble lot. Okay. Spinelessness or spine or spineless inactive. Okay. Okay, so fencing lesson beyond insight and omen or sacrament. Okay. Uh, deaths, untouched by death, uh, ready for action, uh, destiny scene now bearable, okay. Begin the chapter. <clears throat> At first there was nothing. No time, no sensation, nothing but darkness and void. But then they will uh, breathe life into nothingness. Matter and spirit were set in motion. History began its march. <laughs> it was your first turn to enter the world, or this world. Your first bad memory, was your first bad memory, ah! Your first memory was you lying on your back, blinded by the light of the white, or blinded by a bright white light. That's a tongue tire there. Uh, you are not alone. Above you, the tower of a colossal figures of those who have created you. You are part of them. They are a part of you. Between you and them is an inexplicable connection, a strong, unbreakable link. It is like hardcore, and it's like you are coming out of this womb, and you're gonna learn about this world. Like we thought, freaking Assassin's Creed Origin was something. They they didn't go that deep. Apparently, they should take notes from this game. And guard you and protect you. It hurts to breathe. You let out the pain in the form of a desperate scream. Your creators extend their arms towards you. There are two of them. The ones who made your form. From their own selves and brought you into this world. They are united, yet as they lean closer, you begin to see how different they are. You can already feel the differences within you struggling against each other. The first figure is soft and empathetic, wise and merciful. The love that penetrates from it wraps you and toe like an invisible blanket. The form, the warmth. From it is never ending. Aw, it's a mama figure. The second figure is strong and powerful, commanding and noble. It is harsh but fair, a beacon of guidance, a force to protection and merciless punishment for every misdeed. Yet there's also a third figure. Like is a shadow bear between them both. Or behind them, yet already pulsing with an unbreakable will to live. It is the very will to live that is now growing ever stronger within you. A soft palm, a strong closed fist, a lingering distant shadow, yet you struggled to loosen the, uh, the swindling clothes wrapped around you, extend a tiny hand into the world. Reach out to the palm. Uh, reach out to the fist. Determination. Smile at the shadow. Willpower. Smile at the shadow. Ah, the parents look cute. Your first smile appears on your face, awkward yet genuine. Your mother and father exchange looks and start talking, yet you know no words yet. All I can hear is a sentence of blooming words, sounds, yet the stranger behind them has no need for words. The stranger's look is all but takes you for the field that will let yet will to live in the act that burns within you the shadow brings a finger to its lips as to say there there baby don't cry this is our secret now and then the shack the shadow melts into the light will powers is plus 10. your life in this world begins how will you live it but ask me all these questions <laughs> Stop asking me. I want to I want to be thrown into the fray. 
I mean, I understand they're trying to build you into the idea of it, but quit telling me I'm about to live my life. I, I get it. <laughs> he told me a couple times already. Just, I mean, I understand they're trying to, to put foundation with this, but it's like, stop doing that. Just tell me, okay, you're about to begin an adventure. Okay, I'm, I'm beginning the adventure. And then they go, you're about to experience something that's going to change the life around you. Ten minutes later, you're about to experience. It's like I get it. Stop it. It's like warning me. Watch out. There's going to be a drop here in this roller coaster, and as you go back up and they stop again. By the way, there's going to be another drop going down this roller coaster. You're like I stop ruining this for me. <laughs> just let me do it. But I mean, I understand they're trying to be as descriptive as possible, but just need to need to slow that part down a little bit. Like we kind of already understand it as a pick your own adventure game. I mean, so far I'm loving this, but it's like they need to slow that part a bit down. As the days go by, you learn to tell your, pa your parents apart. You recognize father by his heavy breath and strong, cold hands. He visits you rarely. That's cold hearted. Yeah, it's like. Okay, Robert Beth, uh, Bretain. Hello there, Dandrick Bretain. Mother's tender voice, however, it follows you day and night. My, you're growing so quickly, my child. There are two more children in the family named Stefan and Gloria. Gloria sings songs to you. She often dresses you in tight clothing and gently holds your hands as you learn to take your first steps. Stefan likes to sweep you up and pinch you and toss you into the air. That hurts. Oh, look, this is your brother and sister. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. That's a dude. Oh, yeah, my bad. My bad, buddy. Fist bump. Okay. Yeah, you're my little brother, and we're going to play together. But I'm always in charge because you were born a commoner. Quiet, you. He doesn't understand yet. Come on, baby Dendrick. Let's go play in the yard. It's hot outside. You grip your brother's hand and with one hand and your sister's hand with the other as they help you walk down the giant stone stairs. Then you sit on the ground and start exploring the sparse blades of grass with your fingers. It tickles. In the sky far above and away from you is a gigantic pillar, perfectly straight in a uh, stick made out of light. It is so bright it hurts just to look at it. Why are you staring at the shining pillar? It's not going anywhere, you know. Hey, I want to play hide and seek. He's just a little baby. How is he going to play? When you hide him, I'll try to find both of you. Sounds like an asshole. Um, you have no idea what they're talking about, but you support them with happy cooing. <laughs> this is strange, but so exciting. Stefan and Gloria glance at each other. Then your brother uh, walks to a big tree, closing his eyes, starting to shout something. Gloria takes your hand and walks you through the yard. Your sister takes you behind some thick bushes by a tall wall. The light from the uh, light stick on the horizon barely reaches here. You can see the home from this place. The ground is crawling from tiny black bugs. Gloria sits you down in front and puts your finger in your, her mouth for some reason, and then she's gone. You can no longer hear Stefan's voice. Gloria is nowhere to be seen. You feel colder. The bugs are no fun to play with. You've been sitting here for a long time completely alone. Nobody checks on you. Did they forget about you? Did they abandon you? Cry loudly, find your way home, sit there, and wait. Okay, I'm looking at the uh, willpower, perception, determination. Um, sit there and wait. The, the crying loudly. I feel like if I scream too loudly there, I'll probably get taken up by somebody that's not them. Find your way home. I could possibly get lost, and some other person will take me in, and then I'd be much, be, or pretty much be that. 
Yeah, exactly. It's let's play hide and seek. Hides in bound a bush. Well, there goes the kid. That's it. Okay, I'll, I'll upgrade my perception. The bushes are covered with leaves swaying in the wind. Your bushes, you brush through them with your fingers. The twigs and branches are stiff and will not bend. They're different from blades of grass. Down on the ground, you see a group of bugs carrying a little twig. You grab it from them. They are so funny, one of them crawls on your finger and bites it. Just enough to sting a little. You hear steps, uh, brisk steps, and then the leaves and twigs nestling, and your mother leans over to you. You greet her with a happy face and show her the finger where the bug bit on it. So that's where they took you. Mother picks you up and puts you on her chest, pats you on the head. Your little brother and sister stand behind her, clearly feeling guilty. Gloria sits in tears. Stefan keeps staring at his feet. You hug Mother tightly. She is here now. Perception plus one. See, I learned that trick from being in stores. You, you stay in one spot, eventually your parents are going to find you. Either going to beat your ass or they're going to take you home. Or you get score one of the toys in the aisle. Man, as a kid, I used to just look at the toys. I couldn't afford to have them. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna act like my folks didn't do that stuff for me. Like, they didn't go out of their way to kind of, every once in a while, give me like a, not so much a Transformer. Those are kind of pricey. But they used to get me, like, every once in a while, uh, we used to go to a place called Brooks. And they used to have Ninja Turtle action figures. So I believe the first time I went in there, I saw uh, Donatello. I was like, oh, it's Donatello. I, I like Donatello. I like the stick. That sounded wrong, by the way. Um, so I, I was looking at that because, you know, the old Ninja Turtle toys used to have those little snap-off things like a model kit. So you have to, like, you know, literally take the damn thing apart from the thing. So I guess supposedly the toys don't get, the pieces don't get lost or whatever. So I wanted the Donatello. So I was just looking at the toy for a while and I was like, I really want this toy. You know, so I kept looking at it. First time, you know, nah, we can't get that. We can't afford it. So I was like, okay. So we leave and we go and whatever, because eventually, or I think the first time we went in there was for like air, airdrop stuff or something. For I think it was either me and my brother. But the second time we go in there, the toy's still there. I'm like, and so I just said, I want Donatello. You know, Bob looks at it, goes, we can't afford that. And then we go and going over there for something else. I think it was like, like cigarettes or something like that. I don't know. But uh, she went in there for lotto tickets and I think it was scratch or cigarettes or something when she used to smoke. So she grabbed those and she left. Third time we went in there, I went back to the same toy again because I was persistent. So I was like, I want to play with Donatello. And so my mom kind of looks at it and realizes I really want that toy. So she goes, okay. So she eventually goes over and grabs it, looks at it for a second, looks at the, the age limit on it or something like that. She goes, all right. You know, and she, she hands it to me and then we go to the counter and then she goes, she gives me the money out of her pocket because you pay for it. So I go and I put on the counter and go, here you go, I'll pay for Donatello. And then so um, I buy Donatello. And so I'm walking out with the victory of this back of my head going, I got Donatello, I got Donatello. Kind of like, you know, that, that, <laughs> that Eddie Murphy thing there. I got my ice cream. Kind of like that, but that's it. I didn't do a little song with him. I just I got Donatello. You know, and so I'm all happy, and I go home playing with Donatello. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Like, that, those toys back in the day were awesome. Like, the old Ninja Turtle toys. Those things, I mean, they were stiff in the joints, and the, but the arms were pretty cool. And the legs were actually pretty cool on them, too. Like, they were, they were a very, very durable toy. I don't know. I just kind of, that memory popped in my head just now. But another memory is you're still a young child, but you can already talk and run around on your own. The day is out of the ordinary. Father is busy around the house giving orders to the servants. Throughout the day, the kitchen has been abuzz with work. There are Sullivan, gloomy uh, preparations and candles being lit. With your older brother, Stefan is quiet today. Your mother takes your hand and brings you to your sister, Gloria. My son, today is a great descent. We are honored the day when the twin gods ascended upon to us. We must send this. We must spend this day in uh, reverence to the gods. You are too young to understand, so just do everything your sister says for now. 
Gloria takes you to the playroom, but there's no toys there. No chairs, even the carpet has been taken away. There's nothing there but bare wooden floor. Today, you're not allowed to go in any other rooms. We're eating nothing but gruel and stale bread. On the day of the Great Descent, everyone must be where they belong. It is quiet. Unusually so. Muffled voices from beyond the door is all you can hear. You're sitting on the cold floor, confused, no idea what to do. Then you hear your sister's voice, a lonely sound in the empty room. It is a small little song your mother taught her. You hold your breath as you listen to it. When the twins come down to earth, they brought the lots to every birth. They let us count them, one, two, three. The twins made them for you and me. I'm not going to sing this, by the way. <laughs> Uh, the nobles rule bravely and, uh, and bravely fight. They protect us with their might. Priests work hard to understand. Guide us by the twins' commands. Common people work in tow. Always patient, never spoiled. Live your lot where you were born. To the day you will pass on. Know your lot, know the prayer. For the twins will see everywhere. You are transfixed by the tomb. Gloria Finn notices your glance with a smile and creeps across her face. You like the rhyme, don't you, Dandrick? Do you know what it's all about? Look, there are three lots. They were brought to us by the twins when they were descended to us by the shining pillar. Remember that pillar in the light of the horizon? That's it. You can see the shining pillar anywhere, just from anywhere in the world. If you follow your lot as you live, you will reach the peak of the pillar. If you don't, you will get eternal torment at the foot. You and I are lowborn. Mom is a commoner too. So the lot for you, for me, is to suffer and be patient and work hard. Understand? The priests and nobles have other lots. Nobles fight and rule over every day. The priests, well, I'm not sure what they do. I'm sure they just talk to the twins and then teach everybody. Gloria stares at you intently. Did you get it, silly? Then she shakes her head and looks and keeps singing the song over and over again. Her voice transfixes on you, drawing you in. The room starts to glow like in the sky. In this light merges two figures you've known ever since the moment you were birth. One of them embraces your, sis or embraces your sister's shoulder. The other stands behind the guard her back. You watch this happen before your very eyes, unable to turn away. Gloria swang to the song, unaware of what's happening. Her song sings the final verses once more. You know your lot, and you know the prayer. You feel uh, compiled by the, the divine sight to express yourself somehow. You feel the words condensing within you from the light. But what will those words be? Finish the song properly. Know your lot and know the prayer. For the twins see everywhere. You sing the last song together, Gloria, and your sister looks up at you in surprise and gives you a nod. The shining pair standing behind her back turn to look at you. You can feel their gaze piercing you from the top to bottom. And for a moment passes, they melt into the dim light coming from the window. Gloria turns her head to look at you where you were st uh, staring. Did you see something, Dandrick? You not shake your head? Not anymore. Childhood, three years. You are starting to understand more and more about what adults say. Your family is an unusual one. Your father is a nobleman, but not... By birth, he, his is but a title earned through great service. But your mother is a low-born woman, a commoner. Because of this, you were born a commoner, but the father says you yet to become into nobility. You learn to read at an early age together with mother. You read and learn by heart the many poems about the divine twins, twin gods who reside upon the shining pillar. Mother calls these poems prayers. Again and again, you try to discern the shapes of the gods in the strip of a holy light that shines in the sky all day and night. 
But the light is so blind or blinding to gaze upon. The slightest joy is all the been is when the uh, stairs are no longer insurmountable obstacle you can climb and even jump onto the from step to step father urges you to be more careful and avoid climbing too high but when the though you could keep following you never stop being curious about the world around you the older brother stefan now spends less and less time playing with glory and you uh, playing with commoners is beneath the noble to be, he says. So Gloria calls him names. Stefan pulls his pulls her pigtails. One fine evening, Father gathers all of you in the sitting room to an announcement. You will be you have another little brother or sister soon. Gloria asks him to bring home a little sister. Another brother would be too much. Stefan gets frustrated. There are too many little siblings getting in his way as it is. Soon you'll be an older brother, too. It doesn't really matter who the youngest will be, a boy or a girl. You will love them the most. Ah. Father then comes back with his trips as he reads his adult books aloud to you. You find these stories of wars and generals and rebellions quite enchanting. Father approves of your fascination. Study hard, and maybe one day you'll become a noble of the mantle and earn your sword. But first, you need to grow up. Growing up, the concept is terrifying as it is alluring. The fuck? Get my ass beat for no reason. But, alright. I think this might save it. Uh, you automatically will be automatically saved. You'll be able to continue from the last scene. Cool. Okay. But the life and suffering of Sir Brennett. The times of all of the fall of the blessed, well, Archean Empire. Now, that's actually a pretty cool game. I like that one quite a bit. Now, again, if you like what you're kind of heard me stumbling over some of the words there, but uh, if you like what you're at least saw from the game here, because again, this is based, a pure story based game, and I'm not going to try to play too much of it, only for the sake of it could possibly ruin it for somebody, but then it's like circumstances be damned because I could also say. That Puppet Master or Puppet Master Ren has followed. Welcome on in. Whew. Tongue tied there for a second. <laughs> but Puppet Master, welcome on in. That was also a good movie as well. But we were just playing some of the Life and Suffering. Oh, hey. Um. I'm uh, not too bad. I'm actually the boyfriend of a streamer. <laughs> um, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm actually the boyfriend of uh, Ready Set Indy, 